Point Pelee National Park is a tiny but mighty park with a great diversity of habitats. One habitat within the park ecosystem that's under particular pressure is savanna. Savanna consists of open, sandy expanses warmed by the sun. Although sparse and dry, sandy-soiled savanna is teeming with life and is home to 15 of Point Pelee's 60 species at risk, including the eastern prickly pear cactus and five-lined skink. The park has lost over 65% of this special and rare habitat over the past 70 years. Without restoration, Point Pelee's savanna is at risk of disappearing altogether. Historically, natural processes like ice scour, winter storms, and fire have played a critical role in keeping savanna open. These processes essentially hit the reset button, preventing savanna from gradually becoming a forest. But that natural reset is no longer happening since wildfires have been suppressed for a century and winters are less severe. Even though it is bitterly cold here at Point Pelee National Park today, this is actually nothing. Historically, our winters would have been much more severe. The lake would have frozen over right to the other side. In the spring, the freezing and thawing would create big chunks of ice. The chunks of ice would float up to the shoreline, the wind would blow them up on the shoreline, and you could get ice piles 10, 20 meters high, as tall as a building. When they came crashing inland, they would scour the land like a bulldozer, knocking down trees, knocking down shrubs, and creating open areas for our savannas. Now that these processes like ice scour, fire, big storms aren't happening as frequently as they used to, our savanna areas are starting to become overgrown and we're losing them. It's more than just a lack of natural processes that's impacting this habitat. Human activity at Point Pelee National Park has added to the challenge. Historically, First Nations encamping in the area hunted, gathered, and used fire to manage the natural landscape. When people began to settle more permanently, savannas were often the first habitat targeted for development into fields, orchards, and homesteads because there were few trees to clear. In some ways, people's influence on the land has maintained the open characteristic of the savanna habitat. In other ways, the replacement of native plants with exotics has posed a challenge. At Parks Canada, we fulfill our mandate of preserving Point Pelee's savanna by mimicking natural processes and helping native species to thrive. The restoration process includes three main steps, clearing overgrown spaces, planting native grasses and flowers, and using fire to ensure savanna stays open and healthy for years to come. In the autumn, as birds and butterflies start their journey to winter homes, we clear away trees and shrubs like dogwood that fill in open spaces. These actions may look disruptive, but they actually help the habitat return to good health. Once we open a site, we never know what we're gonna get into. These sites are so overgrown and so closed in that there's always a surprise. For example, in one of our sites, we were only supposed to have one dwarf hackberry tree, which is a species at risk and threatened in Canada. In the end, we ended up having 20 to 30 more trees. Now that might not seem like a lot, but that's actually double the number that was estimated for this park. So that's a huge success for restoration. Once trees, shrubs, and vines have been removed, it becomes easier to see what plants remain in the underbrush. Many of these smaller plants are exotic species that are easy to remove by hand pulling. Other stubborn plants are dabbed with herbicide to help prepare the site for native flowers and grasses. Even at this early stage of restoration, we may already see some plants or animals beginning to respond favorably. We're standing in Cactus Field, a restoration site that hasn't been open to visitors for over 30 years because it's become so overgrown with trees and shrubs. We were very excited to find several honey locust trees, rare trees in this habitat. These are very important trees to an endangered bird, the loggerhead shrike, who skewers its prey on the thorns you find on honey locust branches. Last May, we were very encouraged that visitors found a loggerhead shrike in one of our recently restored and open savanna restoration sites. This was a really good sign because it shows that we're heading in the right direction to creating those healthy habitat conditions for several birds who haven't been at Point Pelee National Park for several years. <music> 
Once an area has been cleared and cleaned, we plant native grasses and flowers, like wild bergamot, butterfly milkweed, switchgrass, and little bluestem, the kind of native plants that provide food and shelter for birds and butterflies. Over 500 students, clubs, First Nations, and local businesses join Parks Canada staff to collect seeds and plant native species, a clear sign of the importance Canadians place on savanna habitat. With the reintroduction of fire to Point Pelee National Park, we can maintain these open savanna spaces. Prescribed fires push back resprouting shrubs and trees, just as fires, both wild and purposely lit, or severe winter storms and ice scour once did. Fire plays a very important role in Point Pelee National Park to maintain our open savanna habitats. We use a drip torch to light strips of fire that are approximately one to two meters apart. The flame lengths are about one to two feet high, about the height of your knee. It's going to take some time for the ecosystem to respond because fire has been absent for over 100 years. But it's essential to bring fire back in order to maintain open savanna. In the years to come, we will continue to give nature a helping hand in preserving this sensitive habitat for the animals that live here, the plants that feed them, and the visitors who come to enjoy these special places. It's an important opportunity to have a positive impact on our natural environment. If you have yet to experience Point Pelee National Park's savanna habitat, come discover the magic of these open spaces for yourself.